you know, I've been a stripper, I've been a cam girl, I've uh, been in, maybe I shouldn't say those things. <laughs> And I'll ask for quiet on set, everybody, as we're settling. Thank you, moments of settling. There we go. All right, everybody ready? Yeah. Cool. Hi, Maya. Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> thank you so much for being part of this project. Oh, thank you for I'm, having me. I'm Maya Wolf. I am 26 years old, and I grew up in Arizona. I've been in LA for a little, like almost five years now. And I'm an artist. Uh, that's why I moved to LA, actually, to, to pursue um, my artistic endeavors. I'm a visual artist. I am a writer. I, I write poetry and screenplays. Uh, and I'm starting to make music too. Very cool. Yeah. I've been a sex worker since I was 18. So I've kind of just gone through all different types of sex work. I've, you know, I've been a stripper, I've been a cam girl, I've uh, been in, maybe I shouldn't say those things. <laughs> I've been a phone sex operator. I, I've been a, you know, a fetish dungeon worker. I, I've done, I've seen and done it all. And then in 2020, the, the fetish dungeon I was working at closed. And I had already built a little bit of a following for myself on Instagram and I had some agencies reach out to me and try and recruit me and then I kind of did my research from there and uh, joined the industry. Well, I, I love this community. It's all the people I've met have been, I should say, a lot of the people I've met have been really great and kind and welcoming and sex work can be kind of lonely. So like having a community of people around you that are kind of all within the same, you know, boat, I guess I would say. Uh, it's, that's a, that's a good feeling. I remember the first time I masturbated with like, it wasn't a toy, cause I couldn't buy sex toys yet, but I had this like massage thing that I like used for the first time and I put it on my clit. And that's like the first time I remember like ever, like kind of, jacking off with like something besides just my fingers. And I just remember ever since then, I've like loved like heavy vibrational toys because it gets you, I mean, it makes you orgasm really, really quick. And I had never orgasmed before. So I was like, oh wow, this is, this is great. <laughs> that was definitely the first time I orgasmed. Cause I remember like, you know, like playing with my fingers and stuff like that. Um, and like do like even inserting like a little bit of insertion, but I, it didn't make me come because I didn't know what to do do yet like I, I hadn't had sex yet so I didn't like I was just like I, I was fumbling essentially like just kind of figuring things out but then with the vibrator you just like it, it just does everything for you <laughs> and what happened uh after you had that first kind of oh moment did that spark uh oh my god I jerked off so much times. <laughs> yeah I I was like this is great like how why don't why haven't I been doing this sooner <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time people have in their head this idea of like what sex should be, but I'm a strong believer in like communicating with your partner and asking them what they like and like what they want. And I feel like a lot of the time people like just make the assumption that the other person should just know. And then they're like not satisfied per se. And it's like, well, it's maybe if you, talked to that person and like communicated with them and told them instead of just like hoping that they're gonna do the one thing that you love without giving them any sort of direction. <laughs> um, oh God, that's a lot. I don't even know where to start with that question. <laughs> like especially like as a sex worker, you have a very different relationship with sex than most people ever have or ever will have. I don't know, especially if you're seeking something outside of work, like you, like intimacy with a partner outside of work while you are a sex worker is very interesting to navigate. And it takes, again, a lot of communication and stuff like that. I don't I know, I got into, I started seeing someone and like I haven't really been masturbating a lot since then. I feel very like sexually satisfied, 
but before then I I, I jerked off like every day <laughs> um, I use toys a lot I like like I said like heavy vibration toys like uh, I have a little wand that I brought to show you guys later um, <laughs> It's hard because, you know, everybody's gender identity and their sexuality and whatever they may be like going through and trying to like figure out for themselves is so like personal and so affected by, you know, the in the, like what's coming from in them, but also like their environmental factors. Like I, I'm pansexual. I, I've known I've liked, you know, the same sex for years, but I grew up, you know, being told that being gay was bad. So I, you know, like I, I didn't have the space to express that. Um, I didn't kiss a girl for a really long time. So I, it's hard to give someone advice because you don't know what factors in their life are either like inhibiting them from their like expression of sexuality or gender. Just, you know, to the best of your ability, be like true to yourself and the things that you feel. And even if it feels really hard right now, it'll, it'll get better. <laughs>